Welcome to worship. Let's sing.
Good morning and welcome to our service for today, the 25th of October. Now, if we were all gathered together in a church building this morning, it would be compulsory to start by making a joke about how you'd done well to turn up at the right time the morning after the clocks changed. But of course, we're not all in a church building. We're all dispersed all over the internet and you could be watching this on any day, at any time or in any place. But uh, if you were planning on watching at 10 o'clock, well done, you're here at the right time. That's also assuming, of course, that YouTube haven't fallen foul of this and started playing this video at 9 o'clock or 11 o'clock or some other strange time. But uh, if you were planning here being here at 10 o'clock, you're here at what you think is the right time. Well done. But wherever and whenever you are watching this, you are very welcome to this act of worship. We're going to be carrying on this morning thinking more about the book of Matthew and Jesus' parables. And today we're going to be thinking about the story of the wise man who builds his house upon the rock. And if that makes you think of a song, hold that thought. We'll be back to that later. And uh, in the meantime, we're going to start our service with some prayers. And Pat has finally prepared these for us this morning. God of all creation, your love that surrounds us is richer than we can imagine. We give praise and thanks for all that you have given us in our lives. We thank you for the richness of our earth, for our changing seasons and the beauty of autumn. Thank you that you have given us firm foundations that we can always trust. Amen. And so we join together in saying the Lord's Prayer using the modern form with which we are familiar. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Now, modern life in particular, with all this electronic communication that we're using right now to actually uh, share these thoughts this morning, that can all make things uh, life seem as if uh, everything has to be at 100 miles an hour and everything has to be instantaneous. Uh, now, we're going to watch a very short illustration or two now that shows that uh, things are quite simple to uh, do quickly when the foundations are there. But in fact, if the foundations aren't there, the act of actually getting those foundations right can be much more demanding and uh, take a lot more time. Thank you to Seth for that. Now, in the context of building on firm foundations, we wanted to think about anything that you might have made or that we had made um, that went well. Uh, what was it you might have built that you were particularly proud of? Perhaps it was a really exotic thing, like you, you built an extension on the side of your house or you built a kit car from parts or something, both of which are totally uh, outside my sort of scope. Perhaps it was something much smaller. Perhaps you... Uh, built a fantastic model out of junk when you were at school that you're still really proud of. So we're going to have a think about what it was that you made. Perhaps you made an amazing cake that would have graced the Great British Bake Off. Or uh, perhaps you just graced a particular occasion. Did you make your own wedding cake that uh, was an absolute triumph? I'm just giving a nod to my wife here because uh, she in fact made our wedding cake and uh, it was a very good achievement. 
Uh, definitely not my job uh, on that particular day, but uh, she did make ours and it did go well. And so we wanted to have a think now about uh, anything that you did or made that you thought was particularly well. Or perhaps it went a bit wrong and uh, didn't quite go according to plan. Uh, did you perhaps not follow the instructions or not quite get the recipe right or not quite use the right cement or whatever? And there was a bit of a disaster that uh, people still talk about to this day. So whatever it is, good or bad, we want to have a think about uh, things you've built now. And then uh, after that little piece of time, we're going to uh, see one or two things that uh, we thought about where it perhaps hadn't gone quite according to plan. When I was little, okay, I'm still little, <laughs> when I was younger, my favourite thing to do was Lego. I used to get the pieces and build up, colour coordinating them. Like, I did fancy brickwork. Now, my husband is a surveyor and he tells me, in real life, building isn't about what you do on the surface. It isn't about fancy brickwork. He says, for real buildings, the important thing is when you dig down. Before you go up, you need to dig deep. And for that reason, building on rock, he says, is really hard work. Whereas building on sand is easy. When as carters go on holiday, the first thing we do when we get to the beach is we always dig a hole. Like, I don't even know why. It's just so easy and natural therapeutic even. I really enjoy doing it. Jesus tells a story. There were two men. One man built his house on the rock and the rain comes down and the wind blows and his house carries on standing. The other man built his house on the sand and again the rain comes and the wind blows and his house falls down and great is its fall. Now, that was the first part of our thoughts about the uh, actual uh, topic of our service today. And now we're going to hear the reading. And this morning, it's kindly brought to us by Natasha. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like the wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the flood came, and the window blew and beat on the house. Did not fall because it had been founded on a rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like the foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the windows blew and beat against the house. And it fell and great was it was falling. Now when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowd was astounded 
and his teaching for me to bought them. Because one has having authority and not as their scribes. Jesus' most famous teaching is probably, I'd say, his Sermon on the Mount, which is a talk that Jesus gave on a mount, <laughs> I'll work that out, <laughs> on a hill somewhere. And I always picture Frudgham Hill, <laughs> I guess because that's what I know, not because I'm from Frudgham. I'm not actually that posh. <laughs> I'm from Elton, so I spent my childhood looking up at Frodham Hill in the distance. So I picture it just like Frodham Hill, but maybe warmer. <laughs> and um, Jesus presumably was at the top of the mount, using it as like nature's stage, and then going down the hill with thousands and thousands of people who had gathered to hear this new up-and-coming speaker, this rabbi. They'd travelled far and wide, perhaps for days, to listen to what he had to say. And Jesus delivers, teaching after teaching. The people are amazed. In fact, the sermon is so impressive that here we are, 2,000, over 2,000 years later, still talking about it. There's um, some preaching goals right there. <laughs> well done, Jesus. And today's parable is Jesus' great big finale to this sermon. It's his conclusion where he finishes with an ultimatum, with a challenge. He says, are you going to pack up your butties <laughs> and head home and say, well, that was good. Moved maybe even blessed, <laughs> impressive, but not act upon any of it. In which case, Jesus says, you are foolish. Ouch. Or, are you gonna walk away challenged and changed and committed to acting upon the words that you've heard? In which case, you are wise. Now, I like the words wise and foolish. I think we need to bring them back. <laughs> I want to see the return of the word foolish because I think in our society, maybe in our church if we're honest, I think we can suffer from intellectual snobbery where we think that the most important thing is knowing stuff and being clever and passing exam results. And we think that it's embarrassing to not know stuff or to not understand. And I think we're mistaken. Foolishness isn't not knowing. I think Jesus is okay with that. Foolishness is when we know the right thing to do, but we choose to not do it. And wisdom isn't knowing all the things and passing the exams and being impressive. You can do all that stuff and still be a fool because wisdom is knowing the right thing to do and then acting upon it. <laughs> I think of this parable a bit like a test. You know, like one of those quizzes the teacher gives at the end of a lesson and um, they ask some questions to try and work out, firstly, were the children listening and then maybe to check if they understand. But Jesus doesn't test those things. He trusts that they've listened because what he said was good. <laughs> of course they listened. I think he trusts that they understand because what he says isn't difficult. He certainly didn't talk in riddles. It was probably understandable, but difficult to do. So the end of the lesson test is some homework. And he says, what matters from this point is how everything I've said is gonna change your behavior. You can go home blessed. You can go home moved and impressed, but all of that is superficial. It's fancy brickwork. <laughs> it's Bev building her Lego pieces, color coordinating the bricks. Building something with no foundations. 
And of course, the same is true for us. We can listen to our live stream services. <laughs> we can even travel the world, can't we? We can tune into the really good preachers. <laughs> I know what you're doing after this. <laughs> you can find your favorites, the ones that are really gonna speak well. We can read all the Christian books. We can enjoy our place in the Christian community. We can do all the religious things. We can attend our prayer meetings. But it's all fancy brickwork, a religious facade, if we don't actually commit to being challenged and changed by the words that we hear. Foolishness. Or we can be wise and actually do what Jesus says, but it's gonna be hard work. <laughs> he says it's like digging on a rock. <laughs> and if you look at the words that Jesus has just said, you will see why he acknowledges that. Let's have a little look. The Sermon on the Mount, oh, blimey. He's just told them they need to be committed to treating other people well. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> but then he says, you need to put other people before yourself. He says, following him is restoring the people who have wronged you, being forgiving. He says, it's always doing what you say you will do, like always. Recognizing our own faults, rather than looking for dirt on others. Oh gosh, it keeps going. It's being a peacemaker, it's not judging. It's all tricky stuff, stuff I understand. I know what it means, but that behavior does not come easily to me. I suppose we can sum it up. We can sum it all up. We often say with the teaching, love thy neighbor. Apart from, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, you've heard it said, love your neighbor. And I'm like, yeah, that's so challenging. You've heard it said, love your neighbor, but now I tell you, love your enemies. Pray for those who attack you. And I'm like, blimey, Jesus. Like, loving my friends, it kind of comes easily to me, although it isn't that easy. <laughs> but loving my enemies? Loving the people who are horrible, because that's the thing, you see, my enemies, they're nasty. <laughs> they're not nice people, they're horrible. Hating them is what comes naturally. That's like digging on sand, it's easy. <laughs> Therapeutic even, to give people what they deserve. But Jesus says, <laughs> if you're gonna live by these extraordinary standards, Yes, it'll be like digging on rock. It'll be hard, but it's also wisdom. He tells them, those people who are listening to me, those people who hear what I say and live according to my state teachings, you are like a wise man who built his house on a rock, on a firm, foundation.
One of the interesting things about this story is that it rains on both the foolish man and the wise man. Even if we try to take easy paths in life, none of us actually get to avoid hard times. Whether that is disappointment, illness, failed exam results, failed relationships, failed businesses, or things like having our freedom taken away, not being able to leave the house, a national pandemic. It is 2020 and it is raining. And when the storms come, and they always come, so many of the things that we invest our time and our energy and our effort upon, so many of those things, things like our reputation, our self-sufficiency, our materialism, so many of those things are just washed away. But there are some things that can never be washed away. Things like goodness, truth, love, love never fails, the ways of the kingdom. In Jewish thinking, wisdom is something that we are to pursue, something we are to go after, something that we are to commit to, act upon, but the source of wisdom is God God's self. So, if we want to live this extraordinary life that is essentially a life of loving God and loving other people, all people, even the horrible ones, we need to commit to it, we need to act upon it, but we also need to receive it. In Acts, Jesus says to his followers, you will receive power to do what I say when the Holy Spirit is poured upon you. May we be saturated, drenched, soaked to the bone with the full assurance of God's presence and God's love in our lives so that we are able to live this extraordinary life of love that Jesus calls us to, demands from us, if we are to be wise. Well, I don't know about firm foundations on a building, but uh, I'm sure you'll agree you don't tend to see preaching like that in a church that's got a working roof that keeps the rain out. Full marks to Bev there for her dedication to the cause to uh, illustrate those uh, those things in those different settings. Um, difficult to not be able to be in church, but uh, amazing to uh, sometimes be able to see things like that instead that we wouldn't otherwise have the opportunity to do. I'm going to carry on now this morning with our prayers for others and uh, joining our very large cast this morning. These are kindly uh, led for us by Ellie. Dear Lord, we thank you that you offer us firm foundations to build our lives on. We pray for all world leaders that they may strive for peace in these uncertain times. We pray for all of those who, that we have heard about in the news this week. May they find rock beneath their feet. We pray for all of those in our town who feel isolated and alone. May they realise that they are not alone. We pray for ourselves. Help us to trust you, especially when times are tough. Help us to find what we need today to make that ground solid beneath us. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we're nearly at the end of our service today, but I said at the beginning, hold that thought if you thought about a song. So if the first thing you thought when you heard about the wise man who built his house upon the rock was, oh, I know that song, you were absolutely right. You do know that song. Might have uh, learned it when you were in Sunday school or junior church or a school assembly 
or whatever, uh, a firm favourite in all of those places. But uh, we couldn't, of course, have this service today without including this song, and so this is uh, an absolute multimedia performance extravaganza that we're about to take part in. So let's make this the closing part of our worship today as we praise God with the song, The Wise Man Built His House Upon the Rock. And now we'll end our worship by sharing the words of the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.